Rod Robertson, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hey, I'm glad to be here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm really excited to have a chance to chat with you. Uh, it was fun just chatting a little bit in the pre-interview and you know, uh, talking a little bit about our shared love for books and international travel. Uh, and I'm excited to explore your book with you today, uh, The Human Vector. And, and today we're going to be focusing on that concept, the human vector, and how it connects with employee productivity and company success. As we get started, I just wanted to share Rod's bio with everybody. Rod Robertson is an international entrepreneur and co-author with Oleg uh, Kondrashov of the book, The Human Vector. Robertson is the owner of Briggs Capital, a boutique international investment bank. He has conducted business in over 15 countries while focusing on developing small to medium-sized businesses and taking them to market worldwide. Robertson's 20 plus year career in transaction experience and entrepreneurship includes guest lecturing around the globe uh, at institutions such as Harvard Business School and other top flight MBA schools, as well as business forums and news outlets worldwide. He sits on numerous boards guiding firms to streamline operations and make businesses more profitable before selling. Uh, excellent background. Uh, again, I sh we, we share a love for international travel and uh, international business, and uh, I'm super excited to learn more about you and your book and uh, the insights that we can share with our, <clears throat> excuse me, insights we can share with my listeners today. Uh, before we dive on in, anything else you would like to share by way of personal background or context for listeners? You know, for me, life's been a big adventure. And, uh, you know, I'm a businessman by default in many ways. And uh, because I enjoy the human psychology of business and what it means. The numbers are the numbers. I'm an investment banker by default. And uh, it's, a, it's a great place to be to deal with really smart people. So this has allowed me to have this platform to meet uh, men like yourself and my, my co-author on this, Oleg Kondrashov, out of Belarus. And, uh, you know, life's just been great. And I'm looking forward to sharing my thoughts and insights that I've gathered over all the years and how it's all come funneled down into the human vector. Excellent. Thank you. Well, let's start there um, with what you mean by the human vector. What, how would you define that or explain that to a novice, someone who, who comes across your book for the first time? Sure. Oleg the young guy, they call him the Bill Gates, or I call him the Bill Gates of Belarus, the small country that's attached to Russia where they do a lot of technology. He is an amazing young guy, sort of like Dr. Spock on uh, Star Trek. Uh, physicist, PhD, all those good things, young age, started 15, 20 companies, big incubator, government speaker, just quite a guy. And I met him and we kept walking and talking. And, uh, you know, I've, part of my life has been in developing and bringing companies to grow rapidly or to downsize rapidly before a transaction. And it's to me, uh, you know, tracking the money and profitability is everything. So the human vector really interested me as he explained it to me. Uh, it is the, basically it's the characteristics of the, and the thought leadership of a founder of an organization like Oleg. And what he does is he has certain thoughts on how he wants to run his business. Some guys run them raggedy. Other people are, you know, scientific. Other people do. Every entrepreneur runs his business differently. But Oleg has developed a methodology that's proven out uh, in Eastern Europe, now in Europe, and, uh, and now we're, we're deploying it in the United States with uh, over 2,000 business coaches. So it's, it has strong merit. It's been proven in the marketplace. And the vector is the characteristics of the organization and it's the characteristics of the employees and meshing them so that they they have the same dream and they can follow the owner and so this is the, where it begins is you know meshing their dreams but in a scientific approach this is not you know philosophy this is not you know feeling good about the organization this is adhering scientifically in a mathematical approach to following the, the, uh, the ownership uh, to uh, profitability. Excellent, excellent. So maybe you can describe for listeners a little bit about what that approach looks like and what that calculus is for, for better understanding uh, the human piece behind the, the productivity and profitability. Sure. So there's, we just described the, the human vector. And then there's uh, what Oleg's created is called the funnel. 
and it, it and it appears like a funnel and it's the 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 deviation of the employees from the dreams and policies of the ownership and the acceptable uh, deviations. And so we have the vector, we have the funnel, and then we have the angle of the employees. And the angle of the employees is their loyalty to the machine. So they have to be lined up to be great employees when they're hired. They have to drink the company Kool-Aid with the owner and follow it because, uh, I mean, and in, in this day and age with uh, the tribalism especially in the united states the dysfunction in the workplace uh, hr is in chaos who can they hire who can they fire ethnic groups all these issues that have swamped america over the last six months and then uh, you know with with the virus has you know really almost disemboweled many of the uh, hr departments and they're and they're paralyzed and frozen and making terrible decisions and so the vector makes everyone work uh, together as a team and proceed ahead. It's the vector, the bigger the company gets, the further it gets away from the ownership and the less he can control the company. So he has to set some rigid guidelines here that are outlined in the book about what the vector is and how you go about first starting to hire people. And then John, for instance, with 36% of the people working at home, you know, if these people are out of sight, out of mind. I mean, Bill Gates said, uh, I think two days ago, that 40% uh, of the uh, airline travel is gonna be down 40% for business forever. Uh, there's half the people that are gonna be working at home and then the other big chunk of people are gonna be a swing at work. And how do you control the people that are offsite? I mean, the vector is one that helps qualify and that helps track and monitor employees' activities in a fashion that uh, is not onerous, and, but. It, it weeds out the people that are in disharmony with the machine. Yeah, well, and, and what I hear you talking to is, is what I would term uh, value congruence uh, within an organization. Uh, and so, you know, as, a, as an organizational leader, I want people on my team that, are, that connect with and are consistent with the, the organizational values. And I want that for the organization so that we can be successful we can be productive we don't have people pulling us in different directions mm -hmm. but i also want, i want it for my people because they're not going to be fulfilled or happy doing work in an organization where they aren't a good fit where they don't uh, buy into uh the the mission and the strategy and the stated values uh and culture of of the uh, leadership uh, and so i think it's really important on both sides um to to really tap into um, this shared sense of value and purpose uh, and to the extent possible attract and retain people that match that um, and then you know promote that way as well and you're right I think a lot of organizations don't do that particularly well uh, they really struggle in trying to identify what are the the, the, the key characteristics the, the knowledge skills abilities and capabilities you know, of, of A players that are going to be a good fit with the team. It's a, it's a really hard thing and, and organizations struggle with it. Um, so you're suggesting that you have a, a, an approach that can help kind of clean up that mess and streamline the process. Um, so I guess my question is how, how did you guys figure it out and get it right when a lot of other organizations are really struggling with it? You know, it was on an international basis. It, it, it was a fun project in the beginning, but you know, we all know about Six Sigma, Lean Management, all, all these, you know, fairly staid and uh, domestic uh, programs of, of, of lean management. And so the book, however, and the methodology has taken on really a strong, and the reason why we're getting such great traction with it is because of the pandemic. It has just brought chaos to the world and, you know, like in China, everyone has the same DNA. They all think alike, work alike, and they follow the machine. Even in Norway, the people are all from the same pool and they think, and in America, we have uh, what they call 11 tribes and uh, everyone's doing their own thing and, and it's, it's, it's a rodeo. And so, you know, with, with the pandemic thrown on top of the rodeo, there has just been chaos. And so there has to be a strong systematic approach that are going in. Companies are, this year, uh, you know, I, I'm lucky enough to sit on a lot of boards of, from banks to law schools to everything, and everyone has been very giving and caring to the employees. 
This is coming to an end at the end of this year. Everyone's got the free government money. Everyone's had their unemployment. It's all good, you know, waning now. And the start of next year is going to be a totally different program. The, there's going to be big cuts, you know, and there's, they're only going to keep the best and the brightest and the most motivated employees. And they only want to hire the correct people. And it's going to be tougher to get a job because it's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of interviewing online and all those things. So they're going to weed out the chaff, you know, the, uh, the people that are sitting at home and stretching and doing yoga at noon, whereas before they were getting pounded by the boss at uh, lunchtime, uh, where's your productivity? I mean, productivity is slipping on the 50% the of the people that are absent from the workplace right now. And this is only going to continue. But in the first quarter, all across the country, there's going to be big cuts from these people. And these people are going to have to wake up or get, uh, you know, get involved in the, the, the vector of their company and, and pursue the right course of action to keep their job and, uh, and be productive. Yeah, I mean, we always need to, to make sure that we are um, demonstrating our value as employees to the organization. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to do that, but one surefire way to start to erode on at least the perceived value that you bring is, is disconnect with the, the the trajectory, the strategy, the vision, and the, the mission of the organization, right? Um, so even if you're a highly skilled person, uh, even if you're actually a, a quite a productive uh, person, uh, if there's a, that disconnect, um, again, even if it's only a perceived disconnect, um, then then it can cause problems. And and you're right. Right now, in terms of the labor market, it's you know, it's a buyer's market. So, so uh, unemployment rates have been high. There's been lots of churn in the labor market. Um, you know, so lots of people who have lost jobs or have gone into furlough or, you know, uh, for whatever reason, you know, the, are underemployed. Um, there's, there's a lot of people available, which is actually a really great opportunity for organizations to right size and to, um, to, to find you know, there's, there's a greater pool of potential talent available now than there was prior to the pandemic when our unemployment rate was so low um, that it was really hard to find highly talented, capable people uh, and you'd have to steal them from other organizations. So there's more possibilities now in terms of the talent pool and what organizations can tap into if they know what they want, what they're looking for. They have a way to measure what they're looking for so they can make good decisions and get the right people in. Um, you know, I, it, it'll be really interesting to see how things play out uh, in the coming months because you're right, the, the government in the U.S., the government um, assistance programs, you know, are, are running their course and, and running out. Now, it's possible there'll be new a new wave of... Um, uh, of legislation that that could bring additional assistance but as of yet that hasn't materialized so we'll see we'll just have to see how that plays out you know i was just reading this morning uh because it's it's my world of investment banking there was uh in this year and, and especially in the last four or five months there's been 50 billion dollars of capital placed in 800 tech companies and that, i'm not talking about the big the big tech companies you know that everyone reads about but mid-size and smaller tech companies because the pandemic has forced the shift from legacy businesses to new businesses. And so with technology, you can go in these offices and count the number of people on your hands over the age of 55 that are in these companies. So, you know, what happens to the people over 55 years old that are caught up in this post pandemic uh, shakeout? They're more expensive. You know, you can get the young Turk in there, uh, the 26 year old who's gonna chew, his, chew him up with te technology, that older guy. And he's the older fellow is going to cost you two or three times, and he's not going to uh, what these young bucks are, and he's not going to uh, he's not going to be working as hard. So it's it's a, a very wake up call for anyone that is not tech driven to get on board with technology in every possible way you can, and to recreate yourself, because this is an excuse for organizations to go through and just cut the more expensive people and bring in the younger people. For the young people, this is. Uh, they're gonna be able to make quantum leaps ahead in business. And they're, they're that, that traditional thing of moving to one level, then the next, to the next, to the next, in an organization, they're gonna be able to jump 10 years in uh, seniority in two to three years because there's gonna be a vacuum created upstairs and the pivot to technology 
is allowing all these young people to fill this vacuum that's, uh, that's been created. Well, and that's an interesting point because we've been uh, going in that direction for quite a while um, with the demographics of the labor force. Um, there, there's, you know, we've, we've been on the pre precipice of this, of this uh, uh, huge cohort of, of uh, workers leaving the workforce and leaving a bit of a vacuum. Um, and, and creating opportunity for for uh, millennials and, and Gen Z workers. Uh, and so, you know, as organizations have been trying to prepare for that for the last decade and a half, um, what what the pandemic has done is it simply accelerated that process. Um, and it, to your point, I mean, it is going to be difficult. Now, of course, you know, age discrimination is is a thing and, and uh, it's it's a protected class and and organizations can't do anything blatantly discriminatory but the reality is that it's going to be a hard um, a hard situation for a lot of older workers especially if they haven't kept up their skills uh, and continue to learn and grow um, so they can stay sharp and fresh and and really um, bring those capabilities into the workforce now there, you know there, of course there's nothing um, necessarily keeping older workers from having done that but to your point you know uh, there, there, there are going to be uh, more older workers that haven't kept up with it and so that's a that's going to be a challenge um, th that vacuum was starting to happen already this is accelerating us towards that reality um, and just the other nature of the the other aspect of this this pandemic shift uh, is the reliance because of social distancing and lockdowns and virtual work, the shift towards technology. Um, so even more than it would have if, you know, things have played out naturally, uh, this emphasis on technology and, and being able to leverage it. And so um, the digital natives of the millennial and Gen Z generations, um, they're going to be coming into this workforce um, cheaper, as you said, um, with a lot of these skills that are necessary and, and in some cases quite new um, that older generations of workers may not have. Um, and they're going to be in a, in a pretty good situation. But the, the challenge for organizations isn't going to be just, you know, finding the good talent with the right skills, um, you know, and, and managing the labor costs in terms of these age cohorts. But it's also going to be figuring out what are they going to do if, if they do have all of these older um, generations of workers starting to leave the workforce, what are they going to do in terms of uh, the institutional knowledge sharing? And they're, you know, even though they may not have the technical skills, they have a lot of um, uh, relevant experience, uh, both in terms of the structures of the organization, the industry, their their, uh, the, the, the particulars and the expertise around their work. And there, there's gonna need to be some sort of a mechanism put in place to share um, that wealth of, of uh, knowledge and insight um, with the younger generation of workers um, so that we don't, you know, this vacuum doesn't end up creating a knowledge drain um, in our economy. Um, I don't know, any thoughts on that or how that connects with the human vector idea? Yeah, you know, it, to me, it's like the, we're all like major league baseball players or football players. People have two, three, five-year contracts with companies now. I think, again, just focusing for a second on the other people that are, you know, getting older and moving deeper into uh, into their their years of work. You know, finding a young mentor, and I'm just writing an article on this, so it's pretty funny. It's like uh, for what I do, you know, we have a virtual reality reality company we're trying to sell, and I it's really not my game. And I have this young guy I just hired who was, uh, you know, just booted out of Facebook. And he was a little intimidated by me, you know, the big boss, all this. But then once he understood what I didn't know, he, he burst out laughing. And, and, and he said, I don't mean to be disrespectful. And I said, no. And so I've made him my tech mentor. He's a great young guy. He's, he's accelerated my learning for in 90 days and has really caught me up. And it's been so painful for me. It really, it's... Uh, it's hard to overcome uh, 10 years of sludge in my brain that I've led to atrophied. And so, you know, for any listeners that uh, are, are or in presently in my position, I, I encourage them to find a young mentor. And, uh, and I think there's a great place for everyone to, as a consultant out there too, 
why, why sit there and have to slave away at the machine if you can make the same amount of money and get your write-offs as a 1099 and you can hop around with that skill set you just talked about in teaching these younger organizations and these people and using your aggregated information of 20 and 30 years and putting it to use on a part-time basis. Go for the under 30. I know we all want our health insurance and everything, but you know what? To look at you, if you, you say, I'm all set on my health insurance, I just want to be billed. You know what? There, there's a big life on the, on the other end for people uh, that uh, feel the, the pressure of being uh, ousted. So embrace it, find that young mentor. And I really think you should push hard to, uh, to get yourself tech, 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 and just move ahead as a consultant. Yeah, well, I, I like that. And uh, definitely the, the mentorship piece, I think is, is super important. It'll be mutually beneficial um, to, I mean, you really, you can be the mentor and the mentee at the same time. And so can the younger exactly. individual, right? Um, because they're going to get a lot from you and your experience and you're going to get a lot from them in terms of their fresh perspectives and the technology pieces. Uh, it's a win-win. And, and so finding opportunities, I mean, taking ownership over the situation, you know, if I'm an older employee, I should take that opportunity uh, to do that myself organizations and organizational leaders probably should be thinking about um, the mechanisms behind those types of mentorship opportunities so they can provide it for their people as well. Um, just because they, they are going to have to be dealing with this knowledge drain and, and they need to right size and upskill and, and prepare, um, you know, their, their workforce. And so it's, it's a no brainer. I think that it, that needs to happen. Um, it'll be interesting to see if, if organizations, can rise to the challenge in terms of meeting that need. Um, we, we have just a few more minutes. Uh, I, I wanted to give you a chance to kind of wrap this up, um, put a bow on it, uh, you know, give us the last word on, on the topic related to the book and uh, how, how uh, the human vector can lead us to greater productivity and, and organizational success. Uh, and then I want to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about what you're up to, uh, and then we'll uh, wrap up. Yeah. So the, the reason why I was attracted to the vector just has been amplified by the, today's current events. And for the, the, the young people that are just starting into the workforce, it's a great time. The, the, the playing field has been whisked clean by the end of the first quarter uh, with all the draconian cuts that are going to come in and company. The young people are just have a clear playing field now to join and use their technology to move ahead and become part of an, uh, a reset on their organizations. So I think they should be very happy with this. And uh, for the middle management, the people in the mid part of the career, they're right in the belly of the beast. They're fine as long as what they're, they, in our book, we call them gravitators. They have everyone, upper management gravitate to them, the younger people's. And then my favorite people, which I was one, of course, is the disintegrator, the, the people, the disruptor, the people that go in there. The book is really, really good. I mean, when you read a book, what are you looking for in a book? Uh, especially a business book. You want four or five things to stick with you. The rest just, you know, you, you, you look at it and it goes on the shelf. And frankly, to me, most business books are very boring. But the vector, I'm telling you, it's got five or six things in there. The disintegrator, the integrator, you know, the funnel. I mean... He's laid it out and it all makes sense. And um, these coaches and these, uh, uh, we're having all these coaches that are gonna be out there teaching it nationwide. So it'll be a lot of fun, it's timely. And uh, I hope your podcast people give a crack at the book. It's the human vector. And uh, I think it's gonna be great. And I'm, I'm happy to be here and uh, it, it's been fun. And I, I could talk with you endlessly about all these things because they're so exciting. To me, uh, next year is gonna be a great year. And, uh, you know, it'll be a little painful in the first quarter, but I think the, the country is going to come roaring back. We're going to be bigger, stronger than ever. We're, and the America is going to uh, really surge ahead of the rest of the world once again. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and how can uh, listeners get connected with you? Yeah, the, you could take a look at uh, my website. It's uh, BriggsCapital.com. And you can... Uh, you can go right down, uh, scroll down the homepage and you'll see the books and some of the courses I've uh, developed on essential entrepreneurship. And, uh, you know, we represent buyers and sellers of companies and uh, companies that uh, need growth capital we consult with. And we offer a whole wide things for the companies that are growing or companies that unfortunately aren't doing well. 
Excellent. Well, thank you, Rod. It has been a real pleasure to speak with you today and to learn more about your book uh, and your background, your career. Uh, the time has flown by. Uh, but as we wrap things up, I just want to, again, uh, thank you and, and encourage listeners to reach out to Rod, get connected, check out the book. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.